Hey guys, it's Ben here from Strength Factory. Welcome to Factory Knowledge, episode number four. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about some specifics about doing conditioning. And one of my favorite ways to do conditioning in the gym with my athletes and members of the general public. Now, I'm gonna take you through an example of what I do, but more importantly, I'm gonna explain why I like to do it this way. Because uh, once you understand the why, then you can really begin to you know, build your understanding of training, and how to improve and then it's going to help you to make your own decisions in the future, plan your own training and become a better coach, athlete, whatever it is that you're working on being. So, these days I've got a bit of a bee in my bonnet about it but there's this fascination with training being all about just ruining yourself and the value of a training session, certainly on Instagram and all that nonsense, is it's only good if you end up in a puddle of your own sweat, hashtag beast mode and all that crap. And I kind of used to be into that when I was in the army and stuff, I'll be honest, that's kind of the world I lived in. But these days, I'm not a big fan of that. And whilst there is a place for it every now and then, on the whole, a more moderate approach and certainly a safer approach to training is what is required. Now, conditioning is where this really tends to rear its head. And by conditioning, I mean things that are gonna get you out of breath, so we're working on the energy systems of your body. So, this is an alternative to maybe the CrossFit style bee stings and you know, other training method methodologies out there that's very effective at getting you fit, strong, it's demanding, but I also think it's a lot safer. So, there's two parts. The first part here is a strength-based exercise that you do at the start of it. So this would be a what I'd call a high skill movement. So a heavy deadlift, back squat, um, maybe an explosive movement like jumping or something like that or an Olympic lift. Now these movements all require a high degree of skill and concentration and arguably they're also high risk exercises if you do them uh, without the proper and correct form. If you do these when you're fatigued or under time pressure or trying to hurry, then form inevitably breaks down and that is when injuries get picked up. And remember, you're training to become better at your sport. If you're injured, you can't do that. So that is why we do the, um, the high skill exercise first for three to five reps, let's say. So let's say for this example, five reps on deadlift. You've then got a clear break, okay, here, before you then move on to the second part of the conditioning, and this is more conventional, okay? So we've got an amount of time, maybe four minutes on the stopwatch, but depending on how fit you are and what you're training for, anywhere from two to five minutes is usually where I work. And for this now, we set the stopwatch and we're gonna work non-stop for that amount of time doing lower skill, lower risk exercises and movements. Whilst we're gonna strive for perfect form throughout, these exercises give you a little more room for maneuver so that if your form does break down a little bit under fatigue, you're a lot less likely to get injured or anything like that. So for instance, body weight movements are a really great thing to do here. Um, things like goblet squat. If you're proficient in the back squat, front squat, goblet squat, then you should be able to do a goblet squat under some sort of pressure and still maintain good form. Pushing the sled, okay, if you're lucky enough to have access to one of those. Pretty minging, but relatively low skill. It's really quite hard to do yourself in pushing the sled. Um, dumbbell work rather than barbell work. Um, and also we've got things like the cardio kit, like the rowing machine, assault bike, skier machine. Um, and also, yeah, your indoor bike, uh, like your watt bike or spin bike. All of these things give you a little bit more room to manoeuvre, assuming that you're injury free and that you've got good dialed in form and technique when you're in a fresh, unfatigued state. So, you're gonna hit your, let's say five reps deadlift here. You then put that down and then you go across here and then for four minutes, you are going to work non-stop uh, doing a circuit of let's say three, three to five exercises. So you might do, a squat, a press up, a row. Okay, three exercises non-stop, boom, 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 working around for the period of time that you allocate. And it might just be three to six reps of each exercise, so you're moving upper body, lower body, pushing, pulling, 
and that way you're going to get a really strong conditioning effect, the heart rate's going to be raised, you're going to feel the burn, you're going to get what you want out of the training, but what we've got here with this setup is a really safe way of doing it, rather than you know, trying to pull heavy deadlifts against the clock and when you're really fatigued and things like that. So, once you've done that, and then your three to five minutes or whatever on there, you then take like a five minute rest, do maybe a bit of mobility or do some assistance work, maybe some band work for your posture or something, and then you can go again. Once you've recovered, you'll be in a, in a state that will allow you to then pull that heavy deadlift again with good form and to pull it safely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut away and a bit later on I'm going to train myself and I'm going to do some of this and I'm just going to do a real quick video to show you it in action. Hey guys I'm back, it's the afternoon and I'm about to hit a conditioning session. So I'm going to hit the trap bar deadlift, that's not against the clock, perfect form and then I'm going to set my watch for four minutes and I'm going to do single arm dumbbell press, goblet squat and a row on the rings. Here we go. And there you go, four minutes, good solid work on the conditioning after doing the deadlift. So I've that strength stimulus from heavy lift, and I've done it in a safe and controlled manner. I've then hit the conditioning with low risk exercises that I'm confident in my ability to do when I'm fatigued, um, getting my conditioning effect, getting some shoulder strength. The goblet squat is probably a bit too light to be honest, I should have gone a bit heavy on that. But to keep the, the uh, circuit smooth, I just wanted to use the same dumbbells for the press. But if I did it again, I'd probably get another dumbbell for that. So hopefully it's all nice and clear and you understand how to do this sort of conditioning and more importantly, why. If you've got any questions, you know what to do. If you want me to cover anything next week, you know what to do. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Cheers.